to save the world from the devil's lands and give happiness for every man. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man ihtada bu huda ila yawm al-deen. Wa ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah, wahdahu la sharika lah, wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh. All praise are due to Allah, and may blessing be peace and blessing be upon the Messenger of Allah and upon all his companions and all the one who followed him until the Day of Judgment. I bear witness that there is no God worth to be worshipped except Allah, and I bear witness that the Messenger of Allah, Muhammad, is the Messenger of Allah and his slave. Dear viewers, we welcome you in this new edition, and this is the first episode. This edition has the name of Forgotten Sunnah. Uh, my brother and sister, you are aware that as this, what is the Sunnah? Sunnah is actually the method or the way or the practice of Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for his action, all his action and all his saying. Everything Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, everything he did, called the Sunnah. And because we, you know, as Muslim, we are commanded by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and the Messenger of Allah to follow the Sunnah as we follow the Quran and implement the Sunnah as we implement the, the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ما كان لمؤمن ولا مؤمنة إذا قضى الله ورسوله أمرا أن يكون لهم الخيرة من أمرهم. Also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, ما أتاكم الرسول فخذوه وما نهاكم عنه فانتهوا. Also رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم said, عليكم بسنتي وسنة الخلفاء الراشدين المهديين من بعدي عضوا عليها بالنواجد. Also Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said, عن سنتي فليس مني. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, you know, no believer, a man or woman, when Allah and his messenger commanded them to do something, they have no choice except to accept. And also, Sallallahu he said, whatever was given to you or commanded to you by Rasulullah, you should do. And whatever Rasulullah told you not to do, you must not do. Or Sallallahu said, you know, stick to my sunnah and the sunnah of the ruler after me who are Abu Bakr, wa Umar, wa Uthman, wa Ali, bite on them. He said, bite on it, the sunnah, which means with your back teeth. So telling us, bite on the back teeth, this is, shows how is it important and that we supposed to take care of the sunnah as we take care of the Quran. Also, Rasulullah he said, who neglect, who deny my sunnah is not, you know, among my nation. So my brother and sister, in this new edition, we will tackle many sunnah and I'll start inshallah with the sunnah of the wudu. First of all, you know my brothers that anytime you enter the toilet, you know the sunnah that you know that we should do that we should you know you know the toilet with the sunnah that you enter the toilet with your left foot and then when you leave the toilet you leave the toilet with your right foot. But there is a dua many Muslim you know, you know, they sometimes they forget, or maybe they are not aware of it. And this is actually the this is actually the purpose of this new edition is to teach us to teach to teach you and remind you about the sunnah. So there is a dua I really advise every Muslim. Whenever you enter the toilet, as Rasulullah taught us, you say, "A'udhu billahi min al wal I seek refuge in Allah from the evil and the devils. Because, you know, in the, all the evil, I mean, all the devils, most of the time, their houses is there. The house, you know, the houses of the devils are the toilets. So it is a very good sunnah, and it's a very good, you know, habit that we should, you know, really any time we enter the toilet, we should say, you know, أعوذ بالله من الخبث والخبائث. So after you leave, after you finish the toilet, after you enter the toilet, you know, after you say this dua, and then you leaving the toilet, say another dua. Rasulullah used to say, Ufranak. Means Ufranak, oh Allah, forgive me. And the reason he said forgive me, because he stayed, you know, a certain time in the toilet without remembering Allah, without remembering Allah or making supplication. Because you know, my brother and sister, as Muslim, 
we are not supposed to remember Allah or mention the name of Allah in the toilet. Now you have finished, you know, the toilet. Now you want to start the wudu. Also, from the Sunnah of Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when you're making wudu, you must say Bismillah by the name of Allah. And then when you are taking wudu, wudu, you know, there is, I want really to seize the chance also to show the right wudu. Because many people really, they are making wudu and they think that he did the right wudu. The right wudu, my brother and sister, should be according to the way of Rasulullah Sallallahu that you start, you wash, you wash your hands three times and make sure that you water is going among your fingers here and three times and the balm, all make sure. And then after you finish this, then you take the mouth, you take some water to your mouth and then you gargle once, twice. You know, if the water is short, once is enough. But if you have plenty of water, it is better to make it three times. You take the water and you gargle and then you swing the water in your mouth and then or your gargle throw a day and then you throw it then you take the water with your left hand and you sniff the water and then you you know exhale the water from your nose this is actually again three times if the water is available if the water is short then once will be will be enough and the same time also the sunnah sometimes you know Change sometimes. Sometimes you can do this separate, the mouth separate, the nose separate. And the, but sometimes try to get into the habit that sometimes you can do both all the time. You know, take the water, mouth and nose and the face together. This is also was done by Rasulullah After you finish your nose, then you take water, and then you wash your face from the forehead. Some people, they just take water and throw on their face. This is not the right wudu, my brother and sister. Take the water with full hand and then make it all from the forehead here all the way under the cheek, you know. This is very important. Three times, and then you wash your hand, make sure the, the water is following and coming on over the arm, not only on the hand. And doing it like this under the tap is not really the right way. You should really, you know, wipe your hand, your arm, all the way to the elbow, three times. And if you, the water is short, you can take, and, but if you have water tap, you know, also be careful not to really to use too much water. You finish the right arm and the right hand, and then you do the same thing on your left arm. Same thing, make wipe all the way to the elbow. Make sure the water coming on the top, on the bottom of your arm, not only on the top. Then after you finish, you take water and you wipe your head all the way from the front, to the back. But don't wipe your neck. This is not a sunnah really to wipe your neck. Just from the forehead all the way back once. And this is it. Then whatever left in your fingertip, then you put, you wipe your ear from inside and outside. Then you go and then wash your uh, right foot. And the same, you, the same thing you do with your fingers, do the same thing with toes. Also make sure the water go in the toes and the water comes all the way to the ankle. After you finish the right foot, then you do the same thing for the left foot. Now, also from the sunnah, we should not really use too much water. You know, Islam is forbidding us from wasting water, wasting food, wasting money. Rasulullah said, Ya Bani Adam, khudu zinatakum inda kullu masjid, wa kulu wa shrabu, wa la tusrifu, innahu la yuhubbu al-musrifin. O mankind, Take, you know, your, take care of your appearance, your, you know, to be, to look good whenever you go to Salah. And the Kulli Masjid means at each Masjid. And the Kulli Salah means at each Masjid. At, at, sorry, at each Masjid means at, kulli sal at every Salah. So it's very important, my brother, whenever you are preparing for Salah, you should really take care of your appearance. But in the same time, when you are making wudu, don't waste too much water. Rasulullah has forbidden us from wasting water, even if we are sitting next a river. Even if you are really making wudu from a river, you must not waste water. This is, you know, again, a lesson from Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to teach us that we should not, you know, be, you know, as a, a Muslim to waste things. Okay, after you now, Alhamdulillah, you made your wudu. This is, again, after you be careful not to waste water. There are also the sunnah, after you make the wudu, you say, Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah after you finish the wudu.
If you add, Allahumma ja'anni min al-tawabin wa mutatahirin, also good. But you know, the thing for sure, it was Rasulullah used to say, he said, ashadu an la ila Allah wa ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. And then you go to the masjid. When you enter the masjid, also from the sunnah, that you should enter the masjid with your right foot. And then when you enter the masjid, the sunnah also that, which actually narrated by Abi Qatada radiallahu anhu, he said, you know, إِذَا دَخَلَ أَحَدُكُمُ الْمَسْجِدِ فَلَا يَجْلِسَنَّ حَتَّى يُصَلِّي رَكْعَتَيْنِ تَحِيطَ الْمَسْجِدِ uh, Anyone of you who enter the masjid, do not sit until you perform two rak'ah is the greeting of the masjid. So it is a sunnah, my brothers, especially men, even women, when you are, even my sister, when you go for tarawih or you go for jum'ah, or any time you passing by and it is salah and you want to perform salah in masjid, my sister, and it's, it's not salah yet, and then you want to enter the masjid, you get into habit to perform two rak'ah with greeting the masjid. And inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you for this. Also from the sunnah, that when you are performing salah, you have to be calm. You don't make it fast, you know. Make the salah as good as you can. Because some people, when they're making this sunnah, or any sunnah, he go very fast, you know, you know, like, you know, like a chicken. He just go very fast, and then he, he will actually waste his salah. But this is not actually the right way. So when you're making salah, make sure you are calm. Make sure when you make rakur, you really give time to rakur, give time to stand, you know, raising up, give time for sujood. This is actually the right way. Brothers and sisters, we will take a break. Stay tuned. Don't go away. We'll be back. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Can I ask you a question? Be my guest. Can I make ijtihad on my own? Is takfir an Islamic concept? Are Salafis a sect? Do I have to give da'wah to people? And is interfaith dialogue haram? Akhi, this is not one question. These are important topics and issues that require we sit and discuss them, inshallah, thoroughly. Actually, why don't you guys join us for these discussions on contemporary Islamic issues and concepts? Welcome back, brother and sister, for our uh, new edition, Forgotten Sunnah, with this uh, first episode. Uh, before the break, I was talking about when any time you enter the masjid, you know, try to perform the greeting, you know, the masjid by performing two rak'ah. But before that also, there is a dua that the Muslim should say, you know, whenever he enters the masjid, whether our, you know, uh, brothers and sisters, male or female, any time, you know, you enter the masjid, even sisters, you know, because sisters may be coming to Jum'ah, coming to Taraweeh, or they may be, you know, driving nearby the masjid, you know, and it is just time for Salah. So, she, of course, she wants to perform Salah in the masjid, especially in this masjid, which has a special place for women. So, anyway, when you enter the masjid, brother and sister, you know, perform the Tahid Masjid. There is a dua, you know, before you enter the masjid, you should say, Bismillah. والصلاه والسلام على رسول الله اللهم افتح لي ابواب رحمتك ان يو انتر ذا مسجد وذ يور رايت فوت از اي سيد بيفور ذا بريك بسم الله والصلاه والسلام على رسول الله اللهم افتح لي ابواب رحمتك وين يو ليف ذا مسجد يو ميك انذر دعاء اولسو ذا سيم بسم الله والصلاه والسلام على رسول الله اللهم افتح لي بفضلك اللهم افتح لي ابواب فضلك ذات مين الله او الله اوبن ذا دورز فور فور يور باونتيز اون مي in, you, uh, when you enter the masjid, you want his mercy. When you leave the masjid, you ask Allah to help you, you know, to, to, to make living. You know, this is the difference. When you enter the masjid, you're making dua that Allah help you, you know, to mercy you and forgive your sin. When you leave the masjid, 
you are asking Allah to help you to make living. So this is actually very important, you know, and this is a, 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 the sunnah that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us to do. Also, uh, the sunnah, Musa alayhi wa sallam, get into habits, especially men, that you walk to the masjid. Unless the masjid is so far away. If the masjid is so far, because when you walk, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will erase all your sin. Each step you walk, one step is, you know, good deeds, and the other step erasing bad deeds. Each step you walk, one step for good deeds, and one step erasing deeds. So the, the more you are in, away from the masjid, your house, the more you are lucky. Because uh, one of the companions, Rasulullah came to him and he said, I want, you know, to shift my house to be next to the masjid. So Rasulullah he said, no, stay where you are, you know, diyarakum, tuktub atharakum. And he was one of the companions. He said, stay where you are. Di yani, uh, diyarakum, that means stay where you are. Tuktub atharakum, that means Allah will written all your steps for you. So the far away, so also Rasulullah he said, shall I, you know, guide you that would raise your, you know, your hasanat and erase your, erase also your sins. Kathratul khuta in masajid. Kathratul khuta. The more you walk to the masjid, Allah will give you more reward and erase your, so this is the sunnah, try to walk. Now, if you are driving a car, because the masjid, especially our brother and sister in Europe, in America, it's not like Middle East, you know, we have, you know, in one locality you will find maybe, or one district you will find maybe about five, to maybe 10, 20 masjid, 20 mosque. But you know, if the, the masjid is so far away from you, it's no harm to drive your car or a motorcycle. Inshallah, I, this is my, this is from me, not from Muslim Sallam. I said, Inshallah, may Allah re re register for you the, the, you know, the wheel, the, the car wheel when you drive, it will be considered like, you know, Inshallah, your steps. Uh, also from the Sunnah of Rasulullah Sallam is uh, uh, be careful and being, you know, care, you, you do care that you will be in the first row. Unfortunately, many people, when he entered the masjid, he just, you know, stay on the, the first row. You know, when he, not the, the, I mean, when he entered the masjid, he just performed the sunnah or the masjid in the beginning of the masjid. Rasulullah he said, if the people know what is in the first row, you know, the reward, if they know what is the reward of the first row, they would have, you know, fight each other for it. They would have fight each other to be in the first row. And Rasulullah he said, if the people know what is in darkness, fil atama, they would for, you know, this mean coming to Salat al-Fajr, they would have, you know, they would crawl. They would come on their hands and foot because of the reward. So I advise my brothers, especially men, because the first row is good for men. Rasulullah said, Khayru sufuf al rijal awaluha. The best of the men rows are the, the first row. And the, the worst, or actually the, 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 the bad row, you know, of the men row is the last one. For, but for women, the opposite. The best row of the women row in Salah is the last one. And the worst is the one, the first one. Because Rasulullah he wants women to be away from men. Obey from men. Unless the women are by themselves alone, it's like many masajid now, the women, they have special place. If it's completely away from men, no. It, the, the, the thing applied to men, apply them. If she take the first row, it is better for her staying in them. But this is, you know, if the women are together. Rasulullah said that because in during, you know, the time of Rasulullah women used to pray in the same, you know, floor with Rasulullah the men in the front and the women in the back. That's what Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi said, you know, the, the, you know, the best row of the women is the last row. So this is very important that when you come to the masjid, my brother, be, you know, really, you know, instead of you sit on the last, in the, at the end of the masjid, no, take the advantage, take the chance, you know, seize the chance, since especially if you come to the masjid and nobody there, sit in the first row because Allah will reward you more than sitting in the, back row. And also from the sunnah, whenever you enter the masjid to perform salah, especially the sunnah, uh, try to, you know, take, you know, a shield or protection or, you know, sutra. You know, if there's a column in the masjid, you know, 
try to perform this sunnah, you know, behind it. Because this is will protect you if somebody, you know, fall, pass by to you, pass by, and he may affect your salah. So it is a sunnah that any time you make salah sunnah, you should really uh, perform salah behind sutra, behind, you know, partition, behind, you know, uh, your, you know, you could put anything in a sm piece, small piece of food uh, or the wall itself. This is actually recommended sunnah. But it doesn't mean if you don't do that, your salah is not accepted. No, it is accepted. But this is, again, the sunnah because we're talking about the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Also, uh, when you are performing salah, also, and you see a gap at the front of you, if you are performing salah on the second row, and then you, saw, you see a gap that somebody left, or there's a gap, then it is a sunnah that you fill this gap. Don't think you are affecting salah. You know, if you move or you walk, it will affect your salah. No. Actually, Allah will reward you, you know, twice for your salah and for filling that gap. Is any time, you see, this is a sunnah. Also from the sunnah, Prophet ﷺ is, you know, dua al-istiftah. You know, some people immediately before they start, they forget about, you know, dua al-istiftah because it is a sunnah that you make the dua. When you say Allahu Akbar, then you start. But this is sunnah. If you forgot to say it, you know, subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik wa ta'ala jadduk wa tabarak ismuk wa la ilahun ghayruk. If you remember this, fine. If you do not remember it, it doesn't mean your salah is not valid. But this is again, oh, Rasulullah, this is the sunnah of Rasulullah. Also reciting al-Fatiha for those people who are behind the imam. If the imam, if you are performing salah in during audible salah, and the imam finish al-Fatiha, then you start reading al-Fatiha, but quite silently. You know, don't raise your voice because you will affect, you know, the people next to you. You will bother them, you will disturb them. They will not be able to concentrate in their Fatiha themselves. So you are supposed to read Al-Fatiha, but by, you know, from your heart, you know, very silent, very quiet. You know, this is, again, the Sunnah. Also of the Sunnah from Salah uh, is also uh, following the Imam. My brother and sister, I want you to listen to this carefully. You know, there is four, you know, cases, the one who pray behind the Imam, which you call Al-Ma'mum, he also does four things. Only one is correct, only one is halal, only one is right, and the other three is not right. Either you are raising the Imam, that means you are performing ruku and sujood before him, or you are contradicting him, mukhalifa. That means the Imam is standing up and you are still sitting. The Imam is making ruku and you're still standing up. This is contradiction. Or, or muwafaka, that means Muafaka, this means you are exactly, you followed him by the same second. You know, he is in, he makes sujood and you did the sujood in the same time. This is muafaka. This is not also, you know, uh, supposed to do. This is also not really the right way. It's not. The, the best way as ma'mum, as you person performing salah behind the imam, is al-mutaba'a, following. So when the imam, when the imam say Allahu Akbar, and he makes sujood, then you come and make say Allahu Akbar. When the Imam raised up, he said, Allahu Akbar, then you raise up. When the Imam stand up, say, Sami Allahu Muhammad, then you come. When the Imam say, Ruku, Allahu Akbar, then you follow him. Al-Mutaba'a, not Al-Musabaqa, or Al-Mukhalifa, or Al-Muafaqa. No racing, no contradiction, not to be exactly with him on the same second. So this is also from the Sunnah. Also, uh, uh, the Sunnah is, is when you finish your Salah, when your Salah is finished, especially on the Al-Maghrib Salah, Al-Dhuhr Salah, and Al-Isha Salah, all the Salah which has three, like Maghrib, four, like Dhuhr, and four, like Maghrib, Al-Isha, uh, and four, like Dhuhr, it is a Sunnah that on the last, you know, Tashahud, that you sit what you call at tawarruk if the space permits, if the space permits, what is a tawarruk? A tawarruk, you are putting your left leg under your right foot. Of course, this is only in case you have, you know, enough space. Uh, because, you know, uh, performing the sunnah is something good. But at the same time, you know, avoiding hurting a brother is obligatory. So, av avoiding hurting other 
you know, brothers in masjid is wajib. And the tawarruk is sunnah. So we should not, you know, bring the sunnah over the wajib. I say this tawarruk, if there is a space, it is a good sunnah. My brother and sister, we will come to conclude our uh, episode uh, for this time. And we're looking forward to see you, inshallah, in next episode. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. رسول الله حبيب الله الله our God is the greatest the one and only glory to him he wanted humans to be the best and give his best religion to them Allah our God is the greatest the one and only glory to him he wanted humans to be the best and give his best religion to them.